Now that we have some migration projects, we're ready to actually go and run the migrations themselves. As a quick recap, remember, you create a project, pick its type, give it a name and save it, and then within each project, you create what are called mappings. Your mappings are your one-to-ones for your actual objects, from source to destination. You can create mappings by going in and choosing Add, which lets you do a one-to-one. -one. So for instance, if I noticed that I forgot to add my benefits site, either it wasn't included in my import document, or somehow it got removed from maybe auto mapping, well, I can add it individually here, and paste in the destination. Make sure I've got the method set, and then click Save. And that's gonna add it back here as a brand new mapping. So you can do them one at a time. You can do the import from an Excel spreadsheet with a pre-configured template file, which you can download. Or again, the auto map feature is usable if you have pre-scanned using your auto discovery options at the AOS level to map things by their names. Additionally, remember, you generally want to run your pre-migration scan source data option so you can take a look at some of the things going on in the source. In a SharePoint site, how many sites, how many templates, any custom workflows, content types, columns, things that may require some investigation to try to ensure that they're going to work in the same way in the destination as they worked in the source. Same thing can be done on all your different types of migrations, mailbox, OneDrives, and so on. So create the project, add your mappings, run your pre-migration and view the source information. And once you've got that done, now we're ready to actually go ahead and run the migration itself. So how do we do that? Well, we go into the migration plan, we select the mappings that we want to run. Doesn't have to be all of them. You can, of course, pick and choose if you want to do these in batches. And once you have selected what you want, up at the top, we go to Migration. Now we've got a bunch of options in here, starting with Full Migration. Full versus Incremental in particular. Your full migration will, of course, entail everything as specified within the migration policy. So if you haven't done so, please watch our video on creating migration policies to see that you have choices on content, you have choices on settings, configurations, permissions, and so on. An incremental migration will do everything that is different since the last full migration that you ran or previous incremental. Additionally, if you've already run a migration and something didn't work, you can retry those failed objects. Objects can sometimes fail for a number of reasons, like for instance, somebody has something checked out. So if that occurs, you could retry it. You can try to migrate permissions only if you don't actually want to move content and or settings and configurations. And if you've scheduled something, you can change its schedule. So the first time you're going to run this, you're going to do a full migration. Again, remembering full doesn't mean everything. You still have to check off what you want. So in this case, let's say that I actually don't want to do everything. I only want to do a few of these. So I'm going to go up to Migration and click Full Migration. Now in this box, we have the option to schedule to a specific date and time. So let's say if I don't want to run this right now, this could be part of a staged migration, or it simply could be that you want to run this maybe in off hours, run it overnight. Wake up tomorrow morning, check the status, see how the migration went. In our case here, I'm not going to schedule it to a later time and date. I'm actually just going to run this right now. So I'm going to leave that unchecked and click Run. You can see it tells us the full migration has started. Now keep in mind, since I'm running multiple mappings, they are actually running as separate jobs. So one of the other things to remember as part of your migration policy that you can set up are your notifications. The notifications can be by the entire project or by mapping. So as each of these complete, if I had the notification set up by mapping, I might be notified if anything goes wrong, mapping by mapping, which is great. If you had it set up to only notify at the whole project, well then all of the mappings must complete before you will receive a notification. 
this can be very helpful when it comes to troubleshooting. Now while that's running, if I go back to projects, I can see we've got the listing of the mappings, how many we've started, how many are in progress, and these will fill in as the migration continues. While that's happening, I can go in and do my mailbox migrations if I like. Same exact features. Select as many of these as you want. Go up to migration and I'm going to kick off my full. Same interface. Do I want to schedule it or do I want to run it right now? I'm going to run it right now. And so I click run. Again, if we now go back to projects, we can watch this as these update. And that's it. Depending on how this goes, my further actions might be to maybe later on run an incremental if necessary. Perhaps I'm doing a staged migration over time. So today is the full and I'll do another incremental maybe the day before we actually cut everyone over to the new environment to make sure that if they've had any changes in the source, we have those covered. If anything, of course, doesn't work, we saw that we can run failed objects again very easily right from within the original project mappings. And as we saw, if we had scheduled something, we could also go in there and update the schedule as necessary. But for now, I'm going to pause the video while these run and we'll come back after they're completed. Okay, we can see that both of our migrations have in fact completed because we are not seeing anything listed as in progress. We didn't stop any of the migrations. I've got three finished and I've got three exceptions in SharePoint. So this is the tool reporting that something happened in a way that it didn't expect it to happen. Let's take a look first at the one that is not throwing any exceptions here. If I go into my mailbox migration, we can see three migration check marks and you can review what happened in each mapping. So if I click on this first one here for Christy and we had this before, this was your source scan information, but now the right side of our screen is filled in. So we can see all of these successfuls here. nothing under exceptions or errors. And if I scroll down towards the bottom in the history, we get a big picture view of the full migration. Check mark means everything is a-okay. I would get the same type of information from the other mappings as well. So for Joni, same thing, successful, no exceptions, no errors. Of course, these are demo environments, so real world, these numbers would be much larger. And down at the bottom, again, I can review. So everything there looks great. But what happened with our SharePoint migration? Now, please note, just because something is not listed in finished doesn't mean that it is a fail. In fact, we have all three of these columns. Finished means everything was successful. Everything went exactly as the tool anticipated. Exceptions does not equal failure. Exceptions means that something occurred in a way that the tool didn't expect. We'll look at that in a moment. We do not have any failed. Failed is kind of a hard failure. It means that it typically wasn't able to connect. It wasn't able to do anything. This could go back to your apps and your service accounts at the AOS level, not actually having the ability, for instance, to connect to Microsoft 365 and do anything. That's your most common type of failure. Another potential reason for failure is the source object. If I was migrating a SharePoint site from a source and that site has been deleted or that team has been deleted before I execute the migration, it was there when I put the mapping in. I may have even verified the mapping by using the verify option here in Fly. But overnight, somebody deleted that thing. And then today when I run this, it's going to come up and tell me I couldn't find it. But what we're seeing here are exceptions. So we can take a look. I'm going to click here. We can see we have an exception on all three of our mappings. That right off the bat tells me that there's probably something consistent. 
and I get a better idea of that when I look over here under errors and I see that they're all showing the same number of errors. Now I could click the errors directly, but I can also go into the mapping. So when I come in here, I can see an exception for the site collection and for the site. And when I look under successful though, I see the lists and libraries migrated, folders, files, items. I'm not getting any exceptions there. But for users and groups, I'm getting 23 successful and I'm getting six errors. So there's your eight, a couple of exceptions and then six errors on the users. Everything else looks fine. So let's scroll down a little bit further. And here we can get a little bit more about that. Again, object with exceptions two, and that's way back up here at the top. Now, if we go to migration error, we can see the actual errors that are being generated. And if we take a look at this, it's our benefits site. That's the site collection and the root site. And I look out here and I see the object has been migrated but errors exist in the object settings permissions. So there's something going on there with the permissions. Well, notice that we're getting everything else as a user error. And when I look out to the right, the user or group does not exist in the destination. I talked in a couple of previous videos about how important it is in particular, when you consider things like mailboxes to do auto mapping to make sure that the users exist in the destination. Well, the same thing holds true anytime you think about SharePoint permissions, Teams permissions, and so on. If the user exists only in the source environment, but not in the destination environment, and we're getting Miriam here, if you've watched a previous video that we had on the mappings, You'll remember that in the destination, I actually changed Miriam's name, but it's saying that Miriam in this way does not exist in the destination. It tried to assign her permissions and it couldn't get them because that user in the destination doesn't exist. There's a bunch of other users in here called provisioning users. Same thing. They don't exist in the destination as well. And I would bet anything that if we go check the permissions on the benefits sites, it would be one or all of these users. That would be why this is throwing an exception. So let's be clear on exactly what we're seeing here. This is the tool trying to do what it believes it should do. Back in the migration policy, we said, yes, one of the things I do want is to migrate the permissions. What does that mean? That means that the users must exist. You have to have your user mappings correct. You can allow it to try to find the users automatically, but then the names must match. I actually did this on purpose so we could see this type of exception come up. This is part of the pre-work of a migration is making sure you've got everything lined up. And if you don't, well, then maybe you don't migrate the permissions. Maybe you uncheck that box. If we go over to migration policies, SharePoint, SPO migration policy, next, scope is structure and content, sites, then we get down to lists, and then we get down here to permissions. If the permissions are not exactly one-to-one, -one, well, then maybe you don't migrate the permissions. Maybe you pre-stage an empty site collection in the destination and set the permissions there any way that you want and just bring over content and settings. The alternative is you just have to make sure you've got everything lined up. If I go back to projects and I go back again into my SharePoint one, Again, these specific eight errors on all three of them, I bet if we take a look at each one, it's all the same thing. Migration errors. The other site is also having trouble with its permissions because these users are not set up in the destination. And our final one, all the same exact warnings. Now, what could you do at this point? Well, if you say, I don't need those users in the destination anyway, then that's great. 
But if you want to clear these warnings, you could go into the destination to make sure that these users are set up and their permissions on the sites are accurate, and then you could retry your failed objects. That would run this again, and it would say, oh, now I know who Miriam is. If it's a name change, you want to go and do a user mapping within the migration policy. Miriam and her name in the source to the appropriate Miriam and her name in the destination. Run this again, and then this will clear. If you did that, then you could come back out here, remember, and go to Migration and go to Retry Failed Objects. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when we see that our exchange migration went perfectly fine, this of course is what we're hoping for. But sometimes there are going to be things that maybe you didn't account for. When I see exceptions, it's very easy to go and try to troubleshoot what those exceptions were. Drilling down into the mapping, jumping into the error directly to see what's going on, and then take appropriate action as necessary. Thanks for watching this short video on how to run migration project mappings and then review the results of your migrations in AvPointFly.